Welcome. Thank you for joining me this evening. I am Monique Rebel. I wrote this book, Transcendence Calling, The Power of Kundalini Rising and Spiritual Enlightenment. I wrote it years after I had a spontaneous Kundalini Rising experience. These days, as my experience was several years ago, these days uh, more of us have similar experiences. What I want to share with you this evening is how we can experience uh, higher states of consciousness, what they actually mean, where they come from, and how to explain them. Um, when I talk to my students, I often hear um, a lot of um, comments about difficulty in understanding what's going on. And fortunately, these days, we are able to reach into the depth of our consciousness much more in a much more free way than in times when we were limited by the dogma, by a religious dogma. My teachings are non-religious and they only have to do with what my experience was and the insights from the experience. Let's first maybe mention what kind of sensations, experiences we can have that are out of ordinary, that we can consider them being forms of spiritual awakenings, but it's not necessarily certain what they are. For example, uh, there is an instance when sometimes we may have pain in the lower back, which is very common, right? But that pain can be accompanied by a certain a feeling of heat. If it's heat and pain in the lower back, it may be a sign of Kundalini, our Kundalini awakening. Usually it's connected with many other events, experiences that we go through and does not, it's not limited to the sense of uh, heat in the lower back in the spine area, but also could be emotional ups and downs. And although many of us, especially in the times of uh, stress, we experience a lot of emotional roller coaster, some of these experiences have to do with spiritual awakenings. Other uh, sensations that are quite common could be a very, uh, very persistent inability to focus and the sense of anxiety. That's something that um, also could be a matter of simply uh, temporary time in our life that has to do with external circumstances, but those circumstances can very well be connected with something much deeper. 
with something that has to do with the deepest transformation human can go through, which is the process of spiritual enlightenment. Other sensations could be a sudden realization about love, like sudden feeling of loving the world and feeling love. It's a very powerful feeling that can stay for a while, but then it can go away. And when it goes away, like many of those sensations, it can leave us feeling really disappointed because where is that love gone? It wasn't real or was it just our imagination? And so it is with many of those experiences that, that they come and go, that they are not uh, permanent. That includes uh, connections with others, exchange of energy with others, including getting signs of other beings, support, um, spiritual support and emotional support from somewhere. We don't necessarily have to know from where it's coming, but we definitely can relate to it in a way that it makes us feel as if there is someone out there who is connecting with us. Of course, some of us are on more continu continuous basis connecting with, uh, with uh, supportive spirits, guides, angels, beings from other galaxies and so forth. For others, these can be very scary experiences because also because connections with other beings don't always have to be really pleasant. We can simply be haunted by, by presences of ghosts and, and uh, unknown entities that are not necessarily pleasant or good for us. Other ways of sudden experiences that make us feel as if something is going on is uh, besides the psychic psychic uh, <clears throat> um, insights it's also there are also uh, visual uh, experiences of relating to certain to certain compositions of views uh, colors um, maybe we can see a bird and that bird is going to become a strong symbol of something that's going on in our lives and it will give us information that we may be sure of or we may be very uncertain about um, connections with deities, gods, information we can get from reading tarot cards, astrology, numerology, all these experiences could be very powerful and transformative and it's sometimes and sometimes we can really learn from it uh, so it's a so it's a, a long-term uh, transformation, but a lot of times it's just a very temporary thing that we can't go back to. 
Um, the same is with such humorous memes that we can read on social media that are very often full of deep spiritual truths. We can relate to them very well and they can ring a bell and seem so real and true but then it's so hard to translate them into our daily reality. Let me introduce you if you are not yet, if you don't yet know about me, um, about my teachings, let me introduce you to um, the way I uh, teach. And it's different to what most of the spiritual teachers do because during my experience I was able to perceive how our consciousness is multidimensional, which is something that is more and more uh, of a common knowledge, but I actually, without knowing anything about chakras, experienced my consciousness traveling through chakras without believing in them even, but I experienced them as dimensions of perception. So each of those stages of transcendence was very different. And from that, I was able to learn that those gates to um, those, the chakras as gates to uh, the dimensions of perception, that the dimensions are there all the time. That it's our individual unit of consciousness, our Kundalini, that's able to receive the information through the vibration of each dimension. And chakras, the energy centers, vortexes, are simply harnessing that information that's always, that's always there. The dimensions are always there. So, if we are going to now look at our experiences from the viewpoint of chakras as gates to the dimensions of perception, we can find really interesting stuff. Um, first of all, what we need to know is that our consciousness, our Kundalini, is resting in a dormant state in between the first and second chakra, more or less, in the sacrum area. During our lifetime, we don't necessarily know about existence of Kundalini, although without it, we wouldn't be. Kundalini is our consciousness. That consciousness, as you can see being right here, has created all of that. And there are, in our human form, there are at least seven dimensions that we can, we are able to relate to and perceive. In our lifetimes, we normally, and that's the matter of most of human population, 
we are living in those first three dimensions. So now the first one is the material dimension. It's all the material world, including our bodies. It's everything that we can see, hear, touch, smell. It's all that we go through in a physical way. It's cosmos, it's microcosm, it's all that we can see under microscope and it's the far, far away galaxies that we know so little about. We don't even know what's out there, but Science is, of course, trying very hard to find out more and more and more, and there is always more to learn. But that's just the physical world. The second dimension that we experience as human very strongly is the emotional dimension. That's the second chakra. So, if for example, something happens in our life and we are going through in some kind of emotional upheaval that our emotions are, are challenged, that we are, we are maybe in a state of a shock or maybe we are deeply saddened or maybe we are experiencing depression. The Kundalini right here is definitely feeling it. It's very close to that chakra which harnesses emotions. And if we don't clean this chakra, if we don't refresh the energy consciously, we may simply stay in that state of continuing negative emotions. Or, because that's the case with most of us, these first three, especially second and third chakra, are congested. They're full of, the, third, the second one is full of emotions, the third one is full of thoughts, because the third chakra, that's our mind. That's one of our minds. This is the mind that's simply calculating, strategizing, planning, dealing with survival. Survival that's the instinct coming from the first chakra. So it is, unless I uh, meet with you one-on-one -on -one and we can discuss the changes and, and circumstances that are applying to your personal life, it is very hard to tell whether the experiences that are that you are going through are actually kundalini risings or simply needs it's simply there is a need to desperate need to train those second and third chakras because there is so much going on that we can't anymore have any control over it and this is what I uh, what I meet with quite often uh, and fortunately this is something that can be quite easily fixed an overwhelm emotional overwhelm and mental overwhelm resulting in uh, impossible to deal with emotions um, longer term sense of depression or sense of anxiety and overwhelm that yes we do 
uh, explain it as uh, because we have pandemic, because we have this, because we have that. But really, we are very powerful spiritual beings. And our Kundalini is our consciousness that's not just living through this lifetime and doesn't know anything. We know well, we know much better than we, than we um, are, we know much better than we are taught, especially in school and by, and by society. Our inner knowledge is much deeper, much more profound and true because our individual unit of consciousness is immortal. Our spirit is immortal and nothing can kill it. So whatever we're going through, we actually can deal with it. We just need to know how to deal with it. And this is what I teach. I teach how to deal with all of these issues that we are going through by separating each of the chakras as they mention and dealing with each of them separately. We are hoping that maybe there is someone here. Yeah, I don't see anybody commenting right now. Okay. Anyway, I'm welcoming all of your questions, comments. Let me know if uh, there is anything that you would like me to comment on or answer. I will try my best to do it. And for now, let's just go on to dealing with the first three chakras and dealing with the upper ones. Because, as I said, as difficult as it is to tell whether, whether we are experiencing um, a Kundalini rising or it's just a temporary situation with an overload of the second and third chakra that can be easily helped, or whether we have the upper chakras opening. And this is what's most characteristic for awakenings. As I already mentioned at the beginning of our meeting, is that upper chakras awakenings are very powerful they come and go, and it's not always easy to understand them or deal with them. So, if we experience something like sudden sense of love flowing through us, sense of loving the whole world and feeling love, that's obviously the fourth chakra opening. It doesn't mean that it's our Kundalini rising up to this chakra, although it can be, but if that's connected, if that chakra opening is connected with Kundalini rising, then we have to go through stages of Kundalini rising that lead to the opening of the fourth chakra. For example, if Kundalini is able to rise to the third chakra, then we can experience incredible sense of lightness. We can levitate in a state of elation and incredible joy. That joy is connected with being, feeling very bright, feeling like we can understand everything, 
feeling that there was this incredible mental power in us. <clears throat> that state is possible if we can go through <clears throat> the second chakra. And to go through the second one is, of course, not always easy because emotions are staying there and they don't really want to leave unless we do something about it. And I'm teaching that too. I'm teaching how to deal with emotions with the second chakra. How to bring ourselves to the state of emotional neutrality, the stage of emptiness, which will allow our Kundalini, which naturally wants to go up, start moving up. If we are experiencing openings in the fifth chakra, if the fifth chakra is opening suddenly, it could happen because of maybe we heard music that really moved us, that was really inspiring and opened something up in us. Maybe we have psychic insights, for example, sensations of knowing that something is going to happen, seeing something happening, and then it happens, it becomes, it becomes real later. So I know that for me, when I experienced things like that, it was scary before I had my experience, uh, my full Kundalini rising and knew where it was coming from, because we don't learn about psychic insights on a daily basis. We have to really have that predisposition, direction to uh, want to learn more and definitely the openings of the fifth chakra are connected with sensitivity to, um, to that kind of vibration. It's the vibe, it's the, it's the feeling about the energy in the air. That's why music concerts, you know, we feel the energy and together with everybody else who is at that concert, we can we can unite in that in in being right here experiencing through the fifth chakra the fifth dimension of perception which is feeling elated which is taking us up to another level than what we normally feel on a daily basis in our mundane reality. If we experience opening of the sixth chakra, that's also incredible. It could bring incredible conclusions to our life there are so many ways that openings of the sixth chakra can affect us. And I already mentioned that it has to do with experiencing certain symbolism, signs, colors, being affected by visual arts or being inspired to create visual arts to paint to draw to be uh, to be getting into the colors and feel their energy feel the energy of um, deities that we can uh, that we can um, meditate on uh, either 
it could be archetypes that we that we can relate to just because we relate to certain types of uh, of personalities that are archetypes of uh, gods and goddesses or it could be more of a um, def very definite sense of almost like an order that we may feel, hear, and see coming from a power that's way above us. Something that, that's more like um, an intuitive sense of the need to do things in a certain way. This is what um, the sixth chakra opening means and it could be uh, for example that if we uh, have the sixth chakra opening our dreams can be very symbolic very meaningful and impossible to forget too like it's sometimes it's really easy to forget dreams but those dreams are so meaningful that before we forget them, we get the sense of them. We really understand what they mean, or at least try to understand. And if we do um, really try to intuitively comprehend those dreams, they can give us a lot of information very pertinent information to our individual situation at the time. If we are experiencing um, profound thoughts, conclusions that are not coming from the third chakra, the mind that has to do with mundane reality, with, with actually planning, surviving, uh, speculating on what's the best way of doing things. Now I'm talking about the seventh chakra mind that has to do with contemplating, observing, witnessing, witnessing what's going on and having conclusions. Sometimes these uh, Realizations come from reading, uh, just as I said earlier, memes on uh, social media. They can be very meaningful. They can really move us and take us to a place where we can see our life from a little bit of a, more of a distance where we can uh, actually adapt certain deep spiritual truths to, to our life and get a better direction, what's right and what's wrong, because these, the information that come, that's coming from developing of the sixth chakra, seventh chakra, that chakra is very very hard to open it really does not open easily it takes a lot to actually break it open but we can have sudden insights that will develop the seventh chakra that's why it's very good to listen to and to read uh, words of spiritual masters, teachers that had their own insights and share them. And we can definitely develop our seventh chakra from that. So, in short, to uh, make a distinction between dealing with awakenings that can come from 
lower chakras and upper chakras. As I said, it's hard to tell if the experiences that we have with our emotions and our mind have to do with Kundalini rising, although, and in the same way, um, pain in the lower back and heat in the lower back, and also sometimes sense of uh, stiffening of the body, if it comes from Kundalini wanting to to move up, awakening and uncoiling, or it is a matter of simply needing to train uh, the lower chakras, which is how we deal with that. We train them. We train the first one, and that's something that we all know about because that's physical activity, that's exercise could be yoga, but could be any other form of physical exercise. And also correct nutrition, preferable yogic lifestyle, as much as we are able to do it in our present circumstances. The second chakra training is about bringing our second chakra to the state in which it will be able to release those emotions. There are many ways of releasing emotions from the second chakra, but most of them are temporary. The only ones that are permanent are the ones that we perform consciously or if subconsciously then <clears throat> then with a dedication that comes from subconscious intuitive sense of the need of practice that's not just every now and then but it's performed as often as possible daily or few times a week, days. <clears throat> the, third, the third chakra is a big challenge for Kundalini to go through and we all need to practice. Fortunately, there are many ways of practicing. One of the most common one is meditation, and different kinds of meditation. But what it comes down to is actually ability to focus the mind. Our problems of anxiety, problems of being unable to concentrate, problems of having the mind go all over the place and, and doing whatever it wants is because we don't practice focusing the mind. Our culture, our modern <clears throat> civilization and commercial world is working in the opposite direction, is working towards distraction. And the more distraction we accept in our lives, the harder it is to focus and the harder it is to have the mind at peace harder it is to accomplish our goals. So, <clears throat> as you can see, the first three, our mundane reality, that's something that we need to train in the form of training the first three chakras, while the upper ones need to be cultivated because Yes, we can experience sense of love for a moment and then it goes away and how to get back to it. There are practices that will cultivate each of those upper chakras and allow us to 
feel, for example, feel that love all the time. Wouldn't that be great to have the sense that actually love is there for you all the time? that you are living your life in love regardless to whatever is going on. It's that deep sense of uh, connection with our own divinity that's inside, that's in our heart, being connected with, with the power of our heart all the time, not just sometimes. And so it is with the upper chakras too. The upper chakras can open because of certain circumstances, but then they can close up. They uh, are absolutely unpredictable, but by cultivating them, we can allow for more balance and for ability to reach the power of those upper dimensions. These dimensions don't operate like our mind that's, that's constricted by time. They don't have time. There is no time there. But nevertheless, the depth of information is incredible. And the richness of the upper chakras is something that we should all be able to access. It is for us to access. It's there for us. We just need to learn to be with it on a more consistent basis. So, I haven't seen any, I don't know why I don't see here the comments. Maybe I didn't look in the right one. Anyway, I would like to let you know that this week, starting now until next Friday, all of my services are 25 percent off so if you would like to sign up for any of my services go to my website moniquerbell.com and sign up to get the discount the code is gracefully that's the code for the discount, the word gracefully. Um, it is mentioned on my website, so you can, you, don't worry if you forget it, don't worry if you don't write it down, you can, you can see, you can go to my website and see it right there. It will be there for a week, and uh, until next Friday, all my services are 25% off and also I do free consultations anytime and that's about half an hour sometimes 45 minutes of uh, free consultation on any subject that has to do with either your uh, mental emotional physical uh, problems or instances of sudden opening of upper chakras or a sense of kundalini rising and so on all kinds of things that can happen and you know everything is spiritual so whatever it is it's meaningful and we can figure it out together. And I hope you contact me. I hope you'll sign up for one of my services or, or more than one. 
we can do them on Zoom or in person. Actually, it's possible to do them in person if you live in the Reno area. Otherwise, Zoom is perfectly fine. So just let me know what your preference is, what your, what your possibilities are, and you're very welcome. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this short session. Thank you, Lindsay. So yes, there is a way to, there, there are comments. I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful evening. I will post this recorded session on, uh, on my uh, social media for, for you to enjoy. Thank you and talk again sometime next month. Okay. Let's see how I get out of here. Okay. End live video. Bye.